Welcome CSE 230 to exercise 10. This is button flex review, as you can tell from the title of my tab up here. And you can see four buttons here, and you can see four paragraphs. And what we're gonna do in this exercise is just review buttons a little bit and review flex a little bit. Since we've been working on our EX7 for a number of exercises, this will just kind of isolate things a little bit. And because there's not always one way to do things, so we're going to review buttons a little bit. We can use list items, we can use buttons, just the button elements. And what we're going to do here with these four paragraphs that are kind of stacked in a group of four is we're going to have one flex container here one flex container here and then our buttons will just be inside a nav element and we'll just use button elements inside here and we'll style them and what we'll also do is we'll make it responsive so that when we resize this page and i'll do that right now when it starts to get smaller it's going to get to a certain point and then they're going to move closer together to conserve some space before they break onto separate lines and right when there's no longer enough room and they're going to break to a new line, what we'll do is we'll kind of stack them. So that's what happens here. You can see just at, at one point, they kind of break one on a different line, but then they go to a stack option, and we kind of make them wider here. And then also the paragraphs stack on top of each other instead of being in the groups of four, or I should say the rows of two. So we're going to do that. So we're just going to review some things and go through it. I was going to have you just kind of do it on your own, but I do want to talk you through this, some of it at least, at least for getting it started, just because... There's some explanation of why to do certain things and can I do this and couldn't I do that? And, you know, it's not always very black and white. There's always a lot of gray area, especially with CSS. So we're going to get started with that. We are going to make a whole new folder inside our replit. We're going to make a EX10 folder with an index page and a styles.css. There won't be a whole lot of styles. Oh, well, there'll be a decent amount, I guess, <laughs> to do this. Uh, most of the styling will be done on the button and we're using a button class but not a whole lot of other stuff i just made it red and green kind of i guess holiday-ish uh, for something different just to do this and i didn't do a whole lot with the paragraphs or anything else but it's just meant to be a little bit of a review it's meant to be short it may take a little longer than i had planned but hopefully we'll keep learning about buttons we'll keep learning about layout and also troubleshooting what happens with css because like i said it's never it's never black and white there's always little issues that come in why did i do that and why not do this and even with flex there's little issues that come up when we first make it where it doesn't align them evenly the two the two containers won't align where they start the text evenly so we'll have to address that so there's a couple things we'll do with this exercise so this is ex10 and i'm going to start it from scratch coming up so the first thing I'll do is go to my replit and find my CSC 230W1 repel and open that up like usual. And we're still gonna work in the same repel. And we still have our EX7 folder and that was for a couple different exercises. So I'm gonna add a new folder, our first new folder since EX7. And I'll call it EX10 because we did EX8 and EX9, so we'll do EX10. And inside here, it's just gonna be empty to start. So to go in here, we're going to add a new file, and I'll just start typing index, and it'll bring up index.html, and there it is. And it doesn't put anything by default unless you create a new repel. If you create a new repel, it gives you kind of a, a kind of a skeleton of some HTML code. If you just put in exclamation point and hit tab, it gives you a lot of what you need for your HTML page. I'm going to open this up in a new window right now and it has our links there. And then I'll move this over, because I don't really need this right now. And I'll change my title. We'll call it Button Flex Review. And you can put your name on it if you want. And you could put 10, just so you know it's exercise 10. If you want, if you didn't have that, that's okay. It's just the title. And what we're gonna have to do next is on our regular index page, we could jump here right now. Let's put a link to this. So I'm gonna highlight this one, the last one we did, and put a link. So we have a link from our homepage. And I'll put EX10 as far as the hyperlink reference, and I'll change this to EX10 so we see that. And when we go up here and refresh this, then we'll have EX10, and I could click here, and it should go to a blank page, because right now all we have is a blank page, this page, not this page. This page is the blank page. And you can see we have our title up there and we're gonna get started remember 
for our buttons, we're going to have four buttons and basically four paragraphs on the page. So what we'll do is we'll create a nav section or a nav area inside a nav element and we'll put four buttons. Now let's look at buttons for a second. I could go to W3 schools, W3 schools and I'll put CSS buttons. I'll just search for it right away. And you could look at CSS and just look for CSS buttons, but there's all kinds of things about buttons. We're going to be using a lot of this stuff here. And one thing to point out is they're using the button element. And the button element has a default button that you can use. And that's good for using forms, for using JavaScript. Sometimes you may want to use a list so that you have more flexibility with it. But we'll try using buttons. So we're going to try using the button element. And if I go in here just to see what I'm talking about, you could see they're actually using a button element. And then you can still link a button element, but it does have a default button, but we're going to override some of that. So I'm not sure what's easier, but we'll have less code if we just use buttons. So let's do that. And again, you could check through CSS buttons down here, how to use different buttons, background colors, round corners, uh, putting padding around everything is what basically creates the, you know, the, the size of the button, all that kind of stuff. Rounded buttons, there's a border radius, all kinds of stuff we could do, transition for, you know, hovering, all that kind of stuff. So we'll get to all that, but first we have to make the button. So what we could do inside a body is we'll create a nav element. I'll put nav and inside there, we're going to make four buttons. So we're going to put inside when we use that greater than sign, that means inside. So inside a nav element, and you could do this, you could put, you could put nav dot nav, meaning we could have a class name nav and an element nav. Now it doesn't hurt to have both, so there's nothing wrong with doing that. And inside there, we're going to have basically button elements, and we'll give them class names. If you look at these, notice they all have like a dot button class name, all that kind of stuff. So we'll use a class name, we'll shorten it to btn, and we'll give a general one, and then if we need a more specific one, we'll do that later. But we'll give it a general one first. So we'll put button dot btn, and I'll put times four. That means we're going to make four of them. So there'll be four buttons inside a nav element, and I'll hit tab. And there they are. So it's button, class, button, and we can give specific button names, but right now we'll just use button as our class. So we have nav element with a class name, nav, and button class. And like I said, we could have used an ordered list with list items. That would work too, but we're going to try this and see how this goes. Now, I didn't put anything inside there. And actually, let me do this. Let me undo. And if you wanted to put something inside the buttons, you could do this. You could put curly braces and you could just put button one. Now that means there's content. When you see these curly braces with the emit, you could do that. And I'll try to tab here. If it doesn't work, just backspace. So I'm going to hit tab and that didn't work. So I'll backspace and go back to the four. Now I'll hit tab and I'll try it again. There it goes. So keep backspacing and try it again a couple characters if it doesn't work. So now it worked okay. Now I have the button class equals button and I also have the text, the labels on the buttons. So if I look at this and I'll just hit run and I'll go up here and I'll refresh it. That's what I have on my page, four buttons. And they actually look like buttons, they're kind of small. And we'll use CSS to make them bigger and we'll try to center them in the page. We'll use our body to center everything and then we'll even center things in the nav element with just aligning because these buttons actually are line items meaning they're in line they're kind of like like words they'll be next to each other unless we make them block elements they'll be inline elements so they'll be right next to each other so if we need to put space in between them we can use some kind of margin on either side of them if we want so we'll start with that and then after that we'll make our paragraphs but let's just style this first We'll worry about styling some of our stuff first, and then we'll worry about our paragraphs. So let's create a CSS file. So again, inside here, we'll make a new file, and I'm going to call it styles.css, because I like calling it styles.css. And we need to link to it, and we'll link from the index page. So go back to the index page and link. And remember, this is pretty easy to do. I'll do it after the meta name, and I'll just put link and hit tab. And it starts it, and we just have to put the name in here, styles.css. Make sure you're using styles, plural, or if you're using style, then keep it style in both places. And that's all you should need. Now let's put in some CSS. We'll start with body. 
and we'll put a margin around, but let's put a width. Let's make it like 80%. Don't forget your semicolon. Let's give it a background color. I'll type light green. There's light green, semicolon, and then hover over it. And if you want to go lighter, just move over this way. So I'll go really light right now. And I'll run it and refresh it. And it's kind of the light green I want. And we're going to make these things bigger. We're going to make them red. We're going to make them centered. So now we're going to have to start styling our nav and start styling the buttons. So we'll go back here. And also what we could do is we'll do margin auto. Margin auto. That should center things right and left. And if we didn't want margin all around, we could put kind of an up and down first. So we could even put zero here if we didn't want anything up and down. We could put zero and we'll try that. And it's not going to center anything just yet. Notice how it put everything up here. We're going to put our own kind of padding inside the nav. So we're going to do that next. So let's move on to nav. Nav. And it should center the whole nav element inside there. But it won't actually center the buttons. What we could do to center the buttons is actually doing text align. It's just like their text. Just like it's a paragraph. We could do text align and we'll do center. And we'll center the buttons. Now we could do margin auto if we put in a width and all that. But let's just do that for now and see if that works. Let's refresh it. And now they're centered. And what we could do is also put a padding around here, around this section. Now the, the nav is kind of containing it, so let's move this away a little bit. We'll do something like, let's use M's for now. So we'll do padding. Now this is all on the, on the inside of the nav element. We'll put padding and I'll put like 2M for now. Just see what that looks like. And that's okay. And now we'll start working on our buttons. And we're gonna color them. We'll take away the border because I don't think we need a border on them and we'll separate them a little bit and then we'll work on our paragraphs. So that's it for nav. So remember, we're using the nav element. You could just as easy do dot .nav for the class because it's, it's the same. It's the nav element and it has a class name nav, so whichever one you want to use. But when you use button, you have to use the class name button. So when we go here, it's btn. So we're going to make a style for btn. And we could even look at some of this stuff here just to see what we need. This is not cheating to look at this. Background color, border, none. Keep in mind when we use color, that color is going to change when we have a link. Because the minute you link it, it's going to use the, the default blue color and an underline and all that kind of stuff. That's why it has text decoration none right now. Because some of this stuff is meant as if it's linked. Now, we'll just use that as needed. But we could use padding. We could use background color. We could even put color on here for now and even increase the font size. All that kind of stuff. I don't think we need inline block right now because we have it inline, so that's fine. And we'll put padding. And we could even use margin to kind of separate these things a little bit. So let's do some of that. This is just on the nav, and that's all we need on here, I think, right now. It's doing its job. So let's go to BTN. And let's just make our font size bigger. And I'll just make it 120% for now. We could do color white and see what that looks like for the time being. And we'll do background color. We'll go with red. We'll do kind of a holiday kind of look. I'll put red. And we'll adjust the red a little bit. I'll make it a little bit darker. I'll just move down. I'll maybe make it like 180 or something. Just a nice even number. And I'll do that. And I'll refresh this just to see what it looks like. That's good. We need it a little bit bigger. We need padding in there. And we can take away the border. So we just do border none. That's easy. And we'll put some padding in there. Now how much padding do we need? We might want more padding on the left and right and less on the top. So maybe like a half an M on the top and bottom. And maybe one M on the right and left. See what that looks like. Now to do that, it's easy to just break them up from top and bottom and left and right. So top and bottom We'll go 0.5M, and we don't need a comma, and then we'll do 1M, and that'll be on the right and left. And we'll see what that looks like. And that's not a bad size. If you look at these things, it's kind of like that a little bit. So that's not too bad. Now we're going to want more space in between, and we're going to want round corners. How do we do round corners? Well, look for some that have round corners. Border radius. I think I like this third one, so I'll use eight picks. I like that round corner right there. So border radius, eight picks. There's radius, eight picks. And that looks pretty good. 
and we want a little space in between them. Now if we did margin on either side, they would double up in the middle, but at least that would be okay. So I might do margin on either side. That means just on left and right, not really on the top and bottom. Do margin, and remember margin is outside. And top and bottom will be zero, so I'll just put zero, and then I'll put a space. And then on either side, I'll put 12 picks. Now that'll double up and be 24 between them. But I'm not sure what that'll look like. Let's just see what it looks like first. That's probably too much. We could probably take that down. Maybe to six, so it's 12 in between. We'll do that, refresh it. That looks a little better. I think that's kind of what we want. And let's see how it resizes here. Now we're gonna deal with this later where it starts to break like that. And part of it's because we have some you know, padding on the outside, so it's breaking a little sooner than we want, but we'll deal with that later. But that's okay, our buttons look okay. So that's our, our main styles that we have here. Anything else for button? We could do hover, we could do a button hover, we can change the arrow on it because right now it's doing just a regular arrow. We might want a hyperlink arrow, but once we hyperlink it, then it'll have that. So we didn't hyperlink this text yet. And actually, I wanted to do this. I forgot to do this. I should have done this in the beginning. I'm going to call that button 1, button 2, button 3, and button 4. And the last thing I'll do with this before we take a little break is we'll do a button hover. And we could do that right on button. If you, if you look at some of these, they do have a hover that you can... It's a pseudo class, button hover. Now, you could use anything hover as long as you're talking about the button itself. But we're going to do a button hover, and maybe we'll just make it a little bit lighter. So we'll put this after this, and we'll put btn colon hover, and then opening and closing curly braces. And we'll just change the background color. We'll just highlight this, copy it, put it here. Don't need to change the border. And I'll make it just a little lighter. I'll hover over here and maybe just kind of move it over a little. See, there's my original. There's what it looks like now. Just do something like that. Just make it a little bit lighter. It's, it'll still look fine with white. So let's see what that looks like. And even maybe I'll do a transition. I think that could be on the hover. Transition, duration, I believe. And remember under here, they have a transition duration, 0 0.4 seconds. That's fine. Let's try that. Copy that. See what that looks like. And again, that's where you, it just kind of changes gradually. Now I didn't refresh it. That looks good. And I could change the pointer, but I'm going to wait because we're going to link these. And before we take a break, I'm going to link them. So let's link them and get them with the buttons for this video. So how do I link them? Well, these have to be linked. So the, button, the words button 1, button 2, button 3, button 4 are going to be linked. Not the whole button, so we'll just use the text. And if you want, you could link the whole button, but we're going to... We're going to actually hyperlink the text. So again, you want to put a space here and then move your cursor over and then put A, tab, and then hyperlink that and move the A, just cut it and put it on the other side of the text. And then I'll just put a pound sign in there, just kind of like a placeholder. I'll just put a pound sign. That's like, a, like an anchor that you could put to go somewhere on the page or it's actually an ID. Uh, kind of an empty ID. I'll just put that there and then I'll copy this and I'll just put it in front of each button text. And then don't forget the closing anchor tag. Now when we do this, this is going to change things. Watch what happens. I'll hit run here. And now when I do this, they're going to become like links. So I want to change this and I want to get rid of the underline and I don't want it to be blue. So that's why I was saying we didn't necessarily have to make this white up here, although when you're working on it, it's nice to see it white. So I'm going to copy this. And what do we do now? Well, we have an A and it's a button A, meaning it's the anchor inside the button. So I'll put BTN, as we have other anchors on the page, BTN A, and I'll put link, and I'll put paste color white. I'll put text decoration none so it takes away the underline. This will take away the underline. And I'll do the same for visit it. So I'm going to put a comma and I'll put a visit it and that should cover both. So let's see what happens here. I'll run it 
and now you see we're getting the link finger when we hover over there. Now it doesn't work on the button, it's only working on the text, but that's okay because you're meant to click on the text. And that's okay right now, so that looks okay. And I think that's all right. We don't have it linked anywhere right now, but that's a good start for what we're doing. I don't think we need active. Right now, I think that's fine. So we're gonna stop here, and that'll be the end of part one of our button flex review. We didn't do any flex, we only kind of worked with buttons here, and that's okay, and that's what we have so far. We have centered, four centered buttons, and right now they just kind of wrap when the page gets smaller, so we're gonna have to adjust that with some responsive media queries. But right now that's the end of part one, so we'll see you at part two where we'll work with some paragraphs using flex.